Welcome to Conversations with. On today's show, collaborators participating in Gazuda Music's stage show production of their next album. The subject theater. So we were just to like launch into a conversation about Clockwork Orange, and you're about to tell me your your that you saw the movie, you read the book. So I read the book before I watched the movie. Okay. Because I was in college, I was going to Fullerton College at the time, and I was in this whole phase of like I won't watch the movie until I read the book thing. That's valid. That's a valid choice. Yeah. So I read the book and. I think I even brought this, the book, Clockwork Orange, up to you because when I had my idea for, like, my show, my play, and I brought up Cloud Atlas and how they, like, use, like, the weird words. Yeah. I was also thinking about Clockwork Orange because, like, when you're reading the book. Oh, yeah. He just, like, makes up words. Yeah. And, like, you just kind of have to figure out what he's talking about based, like, Textually, like what he's saying, right, right. So, like, blood was groovy, yeah, 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 or like the color red or something, right, 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 groovy yeah. And they like, like did just enough of that in the movie that you like had to figure out what the fuck it was about, right, right, right. Like, I forget what the what the word for friend was, but, but it was like, a weird talking about my mates, talking about my friends, but yeah, there was like a specific word for yeah, that, yeah. And I really like the idea of having that kind of, like, weird made-up language where uh-huh. you just kind of have to figure out what they're talking about contextually. Con- yeah. Contextually. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, no, I dig <laughs> it. I dig it. That and, like, I think combined with a really good, um, like, world uh, mythology, mm-hmm. you know, that, that helps give that depth. Um I was in the middle of watching Bright. Have you seen Bright? Mm -mm. It's a Will Smith movie. It's relatively recent. I heard some people panning on the internet, right? Like, I heard. I read some people that are in my internet circles panning it. Um, And, you know, whatever. Um, People have their opinions about movies. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I finally got around to watching it. It was like last night. I was like, I think if I watch this next movie, I might be able to fall asleep after that. I was like so wired at the end of that movie. And one of the things that was like grooving and like turning me on artistically was that, man, was their fucking like mythology solid. And and although it wasn't as much made up words, it was sort of like they decontextualize, you know, words we know to mean something other that's part of this mythology in, in the world. It's set in Los Angeles in like the not too distant future, like 10 years from now. But it's like as if in our real life history there were orcs, elves, fairies, and magic. Oh. But like here, not in not in a steampunk way, not in a like as if the world was very fictiony, science fictiony way. But like it was like gritty, like the last Will Smith cop movie that you saw. But it's, instead of an, instead of a white guy, his partner is an orc, the first orc. Um, and I've heard that you know people criticize and bash it's it's because it's commentary on race right and race relations and commu- and police and race relations uh, and obviously gun violence uh, but like it got deep and powerful in a like really approachable not too preachy it just made perfect sense it's like yeah in the first sequence and I was just like oh they've got something to say uh, yeah worth watching even people like people didn't connect with it but um, so that got me all excited, and I was thinking about that, about like, wow, wow. I think I even had a thought about you talking about that, the made-up language. I remember it, we all, you, re, you had told me about it, and then you'd referenced it in one of our rehearsals, um, talking about it with, I think you and Aaron were like jamming on, or Aaron liked it a lot or something. Um, I'm like, that it, makes sense. Yeah, because, you know, he's like the lead writer. Uh, 
that it's a really powerful thing that that like when you spoon feed an audience too much it's like bleh. and when you make it too hard to figure out uh, or you try right. to be too clever it, you lose There's them. that disconnect right yeah. but when it's just the right amount of like that makes sense but I gotta do some work I've totally like when I think about the show I think about having a very specific word for God yeah that isn't God right it's like you're reference you're referencing that like that higher being mm-hmm. that something like the creator that's out there but it's like there's a very specific word for it it's like i don't know question would that would it matter because like a lyric in i mean the title in lyric in sun god is that uses the word god would you like just let that like juxtaposition of the two words sit what do you mean I was talking about like my oh your show so so sorry I thought you meant um I I went to Gazuda Uh, you're right for your show that makes perfect sense yeah 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 and actually the more I've been thinking about it I need to share with you a script the like second most complete script that I have because I realized I thought I'd lost it and I have it on paper sadly but not on disc It's about a playwright, but it's actually the, the, it's the same setup. It's the first time I went, aha, about the idea that, I, that we totally connected on uh, at the coffee shop after your workshop. I was like, you want to do a thing? Write the play about doing the thing first. And you like finish the thought. Like, that's the manifestation. I'm like, yeah. So it was about a playwright and her life partner. It was a female playwright. Um... And she's a bit of a like an anthropology nerd, and she'd gone somewhere and like experienced some stuff with some ab, you know indigenous folks that was a little bit like extra, um, and it's you know mysterious and dark. But like, there's so much synergy between the two stories. It might be interesting to see if they we can either build a relationship between, like, keep them separate. But build a relationship or a crossover between them because that's like something I like to tinker with anyways or find a way to actually like merge and integrate them if you like it Um, I can't can't tell you the (laughs) off the top of my head I can't tell you the plot points anymore right now Um, uh, although I know the show it's so weird but I can I can share with you some of the imagery it's like a very normal um, and I was tinkering with near future or kind of a retro thing like going like late 80s early 90s right to give it kind of like comfortable familial nostalgic vibe big city like artist apartment studio apartment kind of like you know like we sort of made it but not yet we haven't moved out of the shitty apartment that we're in yet and some kind of vibe like this too where there's like people that come and flow through the the, uh, the studio space mm-hmm. um and so, like, the dude, the boyfriend or fiancé, um, is sort of, like, really disconnected spiritually. He's sort of like a normie. Uh, I don't like the word sheeple, but, you know, the, the snobs would say he's a sheeple. Um, but he's, he's, he considers himself self-aware enough. Um, and she's, like, deeply spiritual but takes it for granted, kind of like is on, like, kind of, like, forgot that she's a really spiritual person. Mm-hmm. Cause, because she's engaged when, in this, like first wave of success with her playwriting work mm. you know how you get you know you get busy with the practical stuff and you kind of forget to do the magical push, stuff yeah, you kind of set it on the shelf yeah and sometimes that's the right thing to do because the world is very specific in its needs and whatnot anyways this she, what she didn't realize is that when she the experience that she encountered it's like it's like someone went to costa rica or wherever and like did dmt she signed up for that, and what she didn't realize was that it was like deeper and more and more off the beaten path, and more importantly spiritual to the people that had like lured her there. Um, one of the cool things, I, uh, and it's synergy here, like in in Bright, um, in the middle of this cop drama where there's fucking you know you know like explosives, explosives, and like well, it's not over the top. It isn't like fucking. It isn't uh, what's his name with the. Uh, not Michael Bolton. It isn't, you know, uh, the, the the car series where everything fucking blows up. Michael Bay. It isn't a Michael Bay movie where it's like, explosions all the time. But uh, it is sort of like gritty. 
you know, like gun violence. Like, and it, there's a lot of racial tension, right? Like there's the Mexican gangsters, there's the Orcish gangsters, there's the fucking, there's like... The fairy gangsters? <laughs> well, no, no, he just straight... There's a funny bit in the beginning where he's a black cop living next to, um, uh, like... Official gangsters. He just like makes jokes about them. Like, go on and do your gangster shit. And then like he says, today fairy lives don't matter. And I'm, like that like was like that's a fucking sucker punch just at the belt line, right? Yeah. But they made fairies ugly. Like they were nasty little fucking non-verbal, just like wanted to eat your face kind of things. So like you you went with it. Like it kind of made sense. And it was like the one bit. Fairies weren't a big player, right? They were just sort of like an accent piece. Uh, but the elves were awesome. And they were sort of like simultaneously guilty of everything that is white privilege. But also like, you know, trying to be the good guys while also being part of the system. Um, so they were, you know, sophisticated and interesting. But they were like the ultra-rich. Beverly Hills is like... Beverly Hills sign... But it, instead, it's now elvish something, and it says elves only. Oh. Shit like that, right? Um, and there's this funny bit. Uh, they work it in really great. Like, it's in the graffiti art, um, and it's stuff that, like, these recontextualized words that, like, don't make sense, because then you have to figure out, like, what do they mean by that? Because that wasn't, you know... Like, they kept saying blooded, blooded. And I'm like, what? What? They mean blooded. And it was, like, you know, the, the trial of, like, becoming a man orc. Um... It's like, you know, the trial by through blood. And the, uh, it took me a bit to, like, work that out. I'm like, oh, that's what they're meaning. Um, like but, an initiation? Like an initiation thing. And, and mm. so there's, they, they did a really great job with both the mythology that get kind of, that's pervasive and becomes an important part of the plot. It isn't just sort of window dressing. Be, and, and, and it isn't obvious either. Like, they don't hammer it. They don't, like, lay out the, the, the give, you know, the, the reveals in their backstory or in their, you know, it was just well constructed. And then the funny bit was like, they literally have a moment where uh, the orc partner gets killed and is brought back to life. And he's got to stop his very pragmatic, kind of normy, um, African-American senior police partner that's like kind of borderline racist like not down with having this orc new guy on the job because it's the first guy and he's like trying to be cool about it but he's like doesn't like him and you know they become brothers uh, he's not, and he's really beautifully awkward this orc he's like so not what you expect to see and except it's like this hideous face acting at you um, and it, it just, uh, the bit the funny bit is like I think I'm in a prophecy and I'm like I've always wanted to say a line like that <laughs> you know like dude I think this is a, the like an act like they're not. It's not like it's. We're supposed to do this thing now. Mm. I'm like, but we don't know what we're doing. Like, yeah, but it's okay because it's prophecy. I like. I like your. Ever seen Bright? Will Smith worth watching? I think. You were saying. I like your idea of like connecting the shows, having like a through line or something. Whereas like if that show takes place first, where she's like. Oh, I'm gonna go do plant medicine, blah 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 blah. Uh, and then like, my show takes place like in the future, like, yeah. way later. Yeah. Somehow they're connected. Like maybe that's her like great 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 right, 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 or right. something. And it's like to connect it so that way, yeah. There's like the. Uh, but so back to the script. I was. T- I'm gonna pitch you with, like some visuals that are like integral. Mm-hmm. I'm. Con- I really wanted to contrast stage magic wise. Just like walls flying away and like the apartment just disappearing mm. and being surrounded by like tribal warrior dance mm. and I was like really I was really like I thought it was awesome um, The Rock I can't always forget his acting name but what's his name Dwayne, Dwayne Johnson Dwayne, Dwayne Johnson <laughs> Dwayne The Rock Johnson just recently did some movie where <gasps> he, it's like some badass like we gotta go kick these motherfuckers asses movie volcanoes from outer space is that what it's called? No, oh, okay. That's a great <laughs> title. Can we make that a, put that on the band name list? Yeah, yeah. Super volcano. Space. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's like it's like it's like a thug police dra- action movie, but it's like through line is like uh, tribal Hawaiian culture mm. stuff, and he like does he integrates all these uh, from the clips that I've seen. I haven't watched the movie. All these like really awesome. You know, like big burly uh, Polynesian men doing like war dance. Hmm. Long before that movie, like I love tribal body work, 
I like to I like to repeat this line because it's. Uh, oh, by the way, in case you weren't aware, we're like recording oh, yeah, and it'll it's be thrown thrown into podcast mode. Um, welcome to conversations with whatever your made up names are, fictional characters in my fictional podcast universe. Tune in for part two of Conversations with Josh Kazuda and Emily Luna about movies, theater, and interrelated themes. Mm-hmm.